This lecture concerns preventing infection. Preventing infection is a key pillar of antibiotic stewardship and it's everyone's responsibility. Whether you're a doctor, a nurse, a porter or a cleaner, you need to pay attention to preventing infection in hospital. Here we're going to cover three key areas. There's a hand hygiene, care of intravenous cannulas and care of urinary catheters. The World Health Organization has identified five key moments of hand hygiene. Those are before patient contact, before an aseptic task, after body fluid exposure risk, after patient contact, and after contact with patient surroundings. If you want to simplify this, this means that you should wash your hands directly before any patient contact and straight after any contact with a patient or the patient's surroundings. There are two different types of hand washing. That's washing with soap and water and washing with an alcohol hand rub. And we use them at different times. Washing with soap and water is necessary when your hands are visibly dirty or have been contaminated. After using the toilet or after eating. And after you've been exposed to Clostridium difficile this is because this organism has spores which are not killed by alcohol hand rub and if you don't use soap and water you're at risk of transmitting them to other patients. Under all other circumstances it's appropriate to use alcohol hand rub for hand washing. It's important to know when to use gloves. This is when there is expected exposure to blood, mucous membranes or non-intact skin or again, in patients with proven Clostridium difficile infection. You must remember always to wash your hands after using gloves. Moving on to care of intravenous cannulas, it's important every day to check that there is an indication for a patient to have an intravenous cannula. Indications are requirement for intravenous fluids or requirement for intravenous drugs or contrast. Insertion technique is very important and is often overlooked. Intravenous cannulas should be put in using sterile technique. They should be secured properly. Concerning removal, we should check the site of intravenous cannula on a daily basis. If there is any tenderness or red skin, then it should immediately be removed. Routine removal of cannulas after three days, for instance, has been shown not to be effective. As long as we are checking the site every day and removing any tender or red cannulas. Also, it's important that as soon as the indication for a cannula no longer exists, then the cannula is removed. Moving on to care of urinary catheters. There are essentially only three indications for a urinary catheter. It's important that you're clear that your patient has one of these indications if a catheter is in situ. The first is urine, urinary retention or functional obstruction. This can mean anything from obstruction due to enlarged prostate to a neurological problem and a neuro, neuropathic bladder. Secondly, critically ill patients who are requiring hourly urine output measurement. These are patients in surgery, patients in the intensive care unit, and some medically patients who are critically ill. The third indication is to protect perineal skin. So patients who have got open skin wounds, typically bed sores, which need to be protected from the effects of urine, then it's reasonable to use a urinary catheter. It's very important to note what is not an indication for a catheter because this is often misunderstood. Immobility in itself is not an indication. The risks of inserting a catheter outweigh the benefits in patients who are immobile. And although this is a significant nursing challenge, it's important that we do not put in catheters unnecessarily. Similarly, it's true for incontinence. Except for the caveat of patients with perineal skin that needs to be protected, Incontinence on its own is not an indication for a catheter. 
Neither is daily urine output measurement. If urine needs to be measured daily, then it can be done without the use of a catheter. Insertion technique is important. You should use appropriate hand hygiene, use sterile technique, and use the smallest possible catheter you can. Again, it must be secured properly. Preventing infection in urinary catheters is important. So as with peripheral lines, when the indication is no longer present, for example, a patient who was requiring hourly urine output but has now improved, you should remove the catheter at the earliest possible opportunity. The bag should be emptied regularly and the bag must always be kept below the level of the bladder. Urinary catheter bags should never be allowed to rest on the floor as this increases the rate of colonization and infection. In summary, wash your hands before and after every patient interaction. Insert cannulas and catheters with sterile technique. Check the indication for cannulas and catheters on a regular basis and as soon as the indication no longer exists, they must be removed. Also inspect cannulas on a daily basis and if they are painful or there is any redness, they must be removed.